we will definitely not shut up and dribble. The champ is here. I must be the greatest. The champ is here. I'm going to continue to stand with the people. The champ is here. I will, I will not, not, not lose. lose. I'm a bad man. Yes, welcome, welcome, welcome. You could have been anywhere in the world, but you are here with we. My name is EJ, and I got my man. Hey, yes, he's the DB of the show, and we are Black in Sports, giving a voice to the culture that won't shut up and dribble. And today, we'll bring you back inside the locker room. MH, you ready to do this? Yes, sir. All right, man. So today in the locker room, man, uh, there's a special documentary that came out that's, that's bringing us back to a, to a time. Um, the date was November 19th, 2004. It was definitely one of those where were you at or once you found out kind of times, you know? Yeah, for sure. So what we're talking about is, man, the malice in the palace is the date. If, if you don't recall, uh, one of those things, it was really just a cultural change in so many ways in the NBA and then with the with the players and, and actually the fans, man. So we're going to get into the actual um, Netflix series that came out talking about the untold side of the malice in the palace, man. So I think I want to start off with you just to get – Maybe I'll do two questions, man. Do you remember where you were or or like the surroundings about it? Let's just start with that. Let's just go with that. How how do you do you remember where you were? Was it like that awestruck moment? Yeah, I was in uh Greeley, Colorado. Okay. Freshman in college, uh, sitting in the dorms. Uh, and I remember actually watching the game. Okay. And uh when it happened, just sitting there like Yo, <laughs> like, whoa, did uh, am I really watching this? Uh, it was crazy, yeah. So, I remember there was a, there was a few people in our room, mm -hmm. and I think I might have just left and had I had to really concentrate on what was going on because it's crazy, yeah. It's one of those things, it's like never seen that before, crazy. So, I don't really remember where I was, but just like in awe like in shock just like that i can't believe that just happened yeah. right because like i was close i was in ohio then so i was like a little closer to like you know i, I know about detroit you know what i mean so i was uh down the street uh right down the 75 in finley ohio so i kind of kind of knew what was going on and you know we had a lot of the people from detroit uh the the, the d around and you know they was just it was really hype around yeah. that whole section so actually getting to the documentary yeah Give me your first reactions because we're going to dive deep into it. But just give me like your first reactions of what you thought about it. Like just just kind of off the top. Yeah, for one, I didn't I guess I didn't really understand the relevance of it now. Uh, I mean, it happened, you know, 2004 is not like a solid 20 years or was it the date that it happened? So I didn't really understand what the the new kind of hype yeah, what's the significance about like uh, around, why now, right? Yeah, why, why are we releasing it now? Um, but the documentary itself, uh, I mean, they, they gave me it gave some information that you know, in the 15 years or however long it's been since this happened, 17, I don't know what the math, uh, some information that I didn't know Facts. about it. Um, so I guess that's that's a that's a good thing. Um, and there's some other things that I, I think they made for theater, um, <laughs> which, which I don't think, uh, uh, is reality i guess okay let's jump into that then because i had a question that i was gonna hit later but you i love the way we flow back and forth so give me one of those things and this is what i'm thinking like things that they didn't need to put in there because like i'm watching i'm like like no like i didn't need fan with the with the orange and red hair or the, the blue like i didn't need that fan <laughs> and like what was your purpose because yeah. i didn't identify him with you know how they were breaking everything down like okay right. i know how you got here i know you was one got punched like i know every like fan of blue hair, like just to say, like we got really, there. we yeah. have really spirited fans, like yeah, no shit, yeah, they have, they have to hype it up a little bit, a <laughs> little bit, right? Yeah, I mean he's not he's no Clipper Daryl or nothing like that, man. So he really need to be on there yeah. or Orilla from the Raiders. I agree, I agree. Uh, for me, it was more, I guess, hyping up the Pacers a little bit. I guess they have to kind of um, tell the story about you know, why the Pistons and the Pacers, I guess why this game was significant outside of just the fight. Okay. Uh, but where, where they were in, I guess, the state of the NBA at that point. Uh -huh. um, and, you know, they, they hyped up the Pacers like they was like, <laughs> Go ahead. 16 Warriors, <laughs> you know, 92 Bulls or something. Yo. <laughs> yeah. I guess they was on the up and coming, but, you know, the, it made it seem like this was going to be their championship year. 
how do we know that? I don't know. I think the team <laughs> were six and two at that time. There's 82 games in the NBA season. I think Steven Jackson was part of the production team because they <laughs> made him feel like he was T Mac. Hey. Like he was like really the missing link to then win the championship. So that part I was just like, wasn't this like the second week of the season? <laughs> so how do we, you know, I, I guess you have to hype it up a little bit, but I, I, I didn't think the Pacers were were that so then you you let me right to my next question then because i picked that up in a different way so what my question was going to be posed to you is like do you think that they should have won two championships because the way they were narrating and oh, put the, it, the the pistons the, no the uh the oh pacers. the pacers because the gotcha. i mean going on your point the year before the year were. before they were like oh it was this no reggie goes yeah, whoever would have won that, I figured would win. Yeah, in and November. Then, and the right. season ends in June. <laughs> okay. But then, and of course, to add to his story, right, like mm-hmm. it's like the creative artistry that Hollywood gets, Correct. is that Detroit ended up winning. So mm-hmm. it's like, well, we would have beat Detroit right. if it wasn't, but you didn't. Like right. that's a whole that, you know, the Bills can tell you a lot of shit about, you know, if the ball didn't go wide right, so a wide For left, sure. whatever. So, For sure. So, I'm taking it you're on the side that they wouldn't have won two championships. I mean, maybe they would have. <laughs> maybe they wouldn't have. The, the point is, they did. It was the second week of the season. <laughs> second and, week of the season. In an 82-game season, there's a lot that can happen, a right? Lot. So, And we always talk about injuries. There's so much that happens in yeah, the, I you mean, know, maybe they, the malice in the palace happens. So. Yeah. So. <laughs> We don't know. <laughs> so we don't I know. I guess so they can they can claim to that. But it's funny. So we're on the same page with that. Cause I right. seriously sat there. I was like, the way you're spinning this is saying like we should have two rings. Cause they were saying like we should have, you know, whoever won that series when they lost to Detroit, yeah. you know, the I, year it, before. It, it was East, well, I mean, it was, it was Eastern Conference, Conference Finals. finals. Yeah. So right, right, right. So it was like, okay, yeah, you're making it to the finals. Yeah. Um, but you never know the outcome, right? You don't just because you make it doesn't mean you win, right? Ask Patrick Mahomes that. Like <laughs> he made it back. Yeah. But then I, again, he had the Tom Brady. Fight. I mean, I guess they had to, to to play it up, but you would have, you know, you would have thought that this was, you know, the last month of the season. <laughs> right. And, you know, that they were the Monstars and everybody else was just <laughs> regular. I don't know. It's just too long of a season to, to really know what was going to happen. Uh, so I guess let's go back to painting the pictures of who the stars were, right? Of, yeah. of this, of this, because we jumped, you know, Hopefully, most people know about what happened in, in, in this time frame, or right. because they kept talking about it, like it's been talked about like forever, like when the anniversary comes up. But the, I guess we'll start with the main characters and then talk about other people that were in there, and then I'll probably throw in someone else I didn't want to see in there. But mm-hmm. uh, we're talking Jermaine O'Neal, Stephen Jackson. Um, I will call him Meta World Peace right now. Yeah, I, he's got some <laughs> Ron Meta, some, Ron, yeah. like. So no disrespect him, him yeah. that guy. Uh, and then, so those are the main staples, right? Yeah. But of course, Ben Wallace and then Reggie yeah. were all a part, part of that of narrative. Well. Right? Yep. Mm-hmm. Another person I could have really did without in the movie is the ref. Oh yeah. Cause that was interesting. Cause he was, he was the, uh, the gambling ref, right? Yes. Yeah. He was the one that like late, like maybe, and the end of it, well, his career ended early because he got yeah. caught betting. But Don- Donahue or T- Tom, Tom, Tim, Tim, yeah, something like that. Yeah. yeah. So hold on, man. Like we really don't need you. Like, let's talk about like how shade. Like there's yeah. there's three refs or four refs in the NBA. Anyway. Yeah. Not a credible person that we want to talk to, right? Yeah, but. <laughs> like, so I yeah. didn't want to hear. And then he was crying. He's like, "Yeah, you know, going in refing the." Pacers versus the you know Detroit. Yeah, you got Ben and, and Meta. That's a headache. Like, bitch, yeah, do your yeah, job. Yeah, like, nobody wanted. To nobody <laughs> come on at that time. <laughs> right, they were scared. Yeah, but do your job though. Right. All right. So, <clears throat> so they get into the narrative. Um, you know, I like that they had Reggie in there. Um, I, I think it's part of the story because it was. Um, I the way I looked at him or them telling the story was just kind of like Reggie was. Uh, beginning to hand it over to um, O'Neal was yeah. like how they were looking at it. He was, but he was hoping to get the championship for he, sure. before he went. So I like that narrative. Yeah. Um, it's always weird how they do these without them all being in this, in the same room. Yeah. Just kind of get their, get their honest. And then they like mesh it together. But yeah. like, I would love to see them. Like when you do these documentaries, I would love to see a part of it to where it's like, Okay, we took everything, we edited it, 
before because they all probably had to do the, that a sign off approval. All right. And then like, okay, once we get the final cut, now let's see. Now that you've seen it, are there any kind of perspective? So that's one thing I do miss. Yeah. Um, who was missing? Interesting. Who was missing from that? You felt that like, okay, that was really a core part of this. And then just some yeah. funny people that I saw, like I saw Rick Mahorn. And I was like, that nigga known for fighting. So like, <laughs> <laughs> so I'd love to hear what he would say, but, um, yeah. cause he was an assistant or, uh, um, he was somehow helping with the team at that point. Yeah, and that if was... you see the fight, you'll see him in that oversized suit. <laughs> yeah. That 2000, the 2004, 2004 Steve Harvey. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Um, trying to pull people out, but he was one I just thought would have been funny. Yeah. Because of his demeanor. Mm. And then Rasheed Wallace, like, <laughs> yeah, just because yeah, of Rasheed the... wasn't in there either. Yeah. That is a good point. So like, just to kind of get his perspective, like, mm. even if you look at it from, um, a Detroit standpoint, there was right. not a lot of people that were on the floor from Detroit. Right. And like, it's not called, you know, the Pacers, you know, punching people yeah. it was called the, the malice in the palace so right. just to get other people's perspective so that's a couple of things i thought was missing yeah jamal tinsley uh so after watching the documentary uh-huh. and, and <laughs> seeing how he kind of instigated he instigated it. <laughs> fact you can go ahead and get your foul now uh Ron. Ron. yeah so i i i think he would have uh, been a nice little addition to it um, I always liked uh, God. I, I wish I could remember his name, but the announcer for the Pistons. He did. A, I mean, he always does a really good job. He's <laughs> animated. Yeah, he was hype. He was hype. But hearing his perspective for fans, please, uh, in his voice, <laughs> <laughs> please leave the court please now. Leave the yeah. court. <laughs> and then Larry Brown, because I, I do remember this when it actually happened. Okay, when they gave he actually took the you know the uh, you know whatever the arena announcement microphone or whatever the case is. Uh-huh. And he tried to make a plea to uh, <laughs> the fans to stop, you know, what's going on. But he didn't have, he couldn't really say anything. And the look of like that sure, like what? out of control, fear. And, like, like fear. And, <laughs> and he's like, he's about to cry. And he just threw the mic down and kind of left. <laughs> I don't know. His perspective on what happened uh-huh. uh, also would have been, uh, I think, interesting in the documentary. Unless I missed him. Right. I, I don't think I remember seeing him say anything or contribute to it at all. Who's the coaches now? I'm, I'm just drawing it like there was. Yeah, so Rick Carlisle. Who, the, I don't even. Who's he, actually back with the Pacers now. Correct. So he didn't even. Nah, I mean. Right. So he, he, <laughs> he wasn't there. And then obviously Larry Brown, legendary Larry Brown. Um, you know, two other, you know, pieces uh, to this story. Uh, that's interesting. I don't want to get too far off track, but two people that were missing from the story uh-huh. that were actually there mm-hmm. were two two Denver or Denver or Denver or in Aurora kind of kind of natives. Okay, back back in my era, back, back to your home, back to your territory. Yeah. So Chauncey Bills obviously was a point guard for the Detroit Pistons, right? Oh, Chauncey would have been another one, right? Yeah. Like to give his perspective. Yep. And then uh, Eddie Gill, shout out to Lavar, <laughs> Lavar's big brother, Eddie Gear. Eddie Gill was a, a Overland legend. Okay. Um. So went to the same high school I went to. Oh, we need to reach out to Eddie. Get we, his. We, 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 you we, know, we gonna have a follow up perspective show, man. Well, we need to do that, like well, the live and bring everybody on. <laughs> we have to get. We have to get Big Eddie uh over there. But he was a point guard for the Pacers at the time, so mm-hmm. he was actually trying to pull Stephen Jackson, you know, from out of doing it. too many haymakers, <laughs> uh, in the stands. So those are two pieces, um, that were missing. All right. So let's get into this then, because we're we're getting like we're we're ramping up talking about the you know the silhouette of everything let's go down into the meat all right you know what i'm saying let's get down turn on the lights Silhouette's a good word yeah right (laughs) (laughs) i wouldn't yeah okay i'm not gonna don't Uh, get in trouble uh uh-oh yeah see don't get fun you ain't i'm sipping you ain't okay anyway um whose fault was it (laughs) i told you jamal tinsley (laughs) You go to Jamal all day, I'm right? I'm going to Jamal Tinsley, <laughs> okay. man. You kind of know your teammates. A hundred percent. I mean, Ron Artest wasn't even with the team before that, right? He just came back because he was at the Source Awards or he wanted to do his music, whatever the case is. So you already kind of know your teammates like. So that's what it is, though. Yo, he, got, you a little, know, he got some He got a little problems, you know, edge to him, right? Correct. He's not all there. Correct. And so you, you know the game is over, and for you to be like, Hey, yo, you now go you ahead, get, get, that, your, get, get your that five. <laughs> <laughs> you kind of started the whole thing. Now some BS. Yeah. Okay. So you are going to put it on him. All right. Um, let me give you some other culprits. All right. So <laughs> I know you put it square on him, yeah, which I'm, I'm leaning towards him, right? Because 
he was the catalyst, right? We're, we're using sure. some, some big words tonight. All right, so Ben Wallace. Okay. All right, so my whole case with Ben is like the fact that I mean, you didn't have to mush him in the face you like mush that. Somebody, you mush somebody. You mush somebody in the face like I mean, you, he, he got to beat up somebody. He got to somebody. Somebody's got to. Some, it might not be you, but he got mushed in his face on. There's a television. lot of things that you could do, but somebody mush you in the in all. Now of you like, get right. In. <laughs> them the damn rules, man. Someone right. mush you in the face. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And then like so, and we're gonna go back and forth. One of the things that you said that was. Um, or we talked about, like we learned, is the fact that they said that they were all friends. Yeah. So it's like it wasn't that big a deal. And it's like, well, motherfucker, it looked like it was a big yeah, deal. You mush me in my face. You mush me in my. <laughs> you mush me in my face. It's, yeah. it's problem on site. Oh, and and oh, there it is. I, what I don't remember actually seeing it, but back to Ben Wallace, they were saying mm-hmm. like Ben Wallace did wear like thirty two wristbands. <laughs> and the fact that he was launching. <laughs> <laughs> Taking them all one by yeah, one, right? Somebody then throw them headbands, <laughs> all his wristbands at him. Okay. So, so then I mean, he could been someone that got the jump off, right? Sure. I mean, he's throwing shit, got the other fans throwing. Okay, yeah. we'll get we'll get there. We'll get, we'll there. get there. All right. So, um, Ron or Met, he was Ron then. I'm gonna call him Ron then. I'm gonna call him Ron. Yeah, so he, he was test for he this. was Ron our test for this. Yeah. Um. Dumb file. He didn't have to listen to old boy, yeah, right? It like, was probably unnecessary. It was very unnecessary. You got it was what like a minute left, two minutes left in the game. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And you push the biggest mud sucker on the on the thing. Like that's that's a little much. And then to lay on the scores table and feet cross, feet cross. Everybody else is mad. Everybody else is mad, but you sitting back like. <laughs> Let me just key, take this all. I'm a key key a little bit, so, you know, just sit up. <laughs> And just you know, think it's sweet. Yeah, that was a little extra. He said he was going through his breathing exercises all that he learned. Two, <laughs> three, four. You know, like come he on. He could have just went to the bench and sat down, or he could have went. He could have walked. There's, there's other, went like it's went two minutes left. Way. Man, he could. There's a lot of things. Laying on the score is table. That's, that's low key disrespectful. <laughs> a lot of key. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of key in the palace. Like come on, but you ain't crib. Everybody mad. You just like yeah, and you okay. just laying like like that's disrespect too. That like is. plus they just whooped your ass right, and it's like it yeah. was it was up what fifteen yeah, for, up, something up fifteen ninety seven eighty two. <laughs> Game over. Game over. Yeah, forty five so, seconds left. So people are hot, right? Yeah. Uh, all right. So then. I'm gonna go one more. I'm gonna say fans in general. Okay. Yeah. Um, just the way they acted, the reactor, right? Your your ticket, your your cost of admission does not give you the um the right to do whatever the hell you want to do. For sure. And then, you know, kind of piggybacking on that is like, you know, fans are obviously a part of the game somewhat, and you you feel that you know what's going on, but you don't know what's going on. So to your point that you know they, they said that what fans don't know is that the players are kind of all cool with each other in a way right so right you know, like so sometimes you get a little hot-headed with your boys whatever the case may be <laughs> but as a fan you don't really know what's going on so you feel like you gotta defend the pistons <laughs> at all costs <laughs> and i don't think that was necessary at all right and then we'll go to the fan yeah what was his name uh james J- was it jason J- i know it's green jay green yeah is it jason or john mr green mr here. mr green white boy green <laughs> <laughs> the infamous yeah what man's name at here? he definitely john green john okay so john green yep definitely correct started the whole mm-hmm. thing mm-hmm. so we'll have this final debate whether you we think it's um <laughs> tinsley or green but then also donnie said the uh president at the time uh donnie the, walsh yeah the uh, the pacers yeah donnie yep. walsh says you know what man he's like i put all these powder kegs together so maybe it was my fault which is a cool admission but i mean that's 2020 hindsight i mean you did know ronnie was a little bit off the meat ragging yeah. so but so he he gave a little admission to guilt at the end but i definitely think it's between ben and, and tinsley and so you're still riding with Tinsley's his fault. Yeah, I mean Tinsley, come on. I mean, <laughs> know your teammates. You the point guard, right? You the point guard. There you go. You're supposed to know the teammate. You the quarterback. You're supposed to be the the extension of the coach. And he knew that because he put that battery all up in our <laughs> <laughs> Tinsley's back, man. I just didn't know it was gonna go off like that. Yeah. All right, let's go. Moving on to. Oh, do I want to jump into? Let's do media really quick. 
Yeah, let's touch on that. Right? Let's really touch on that. So, I mean, we're in media now, which is hilarious, right? To kind of think about that, you know, being former athletes. Like, we've, we've, let's, we've touched let's, all this. Let's touch on that. All the skill, but how the media, especially back then, right? Like, yeah. I mean, we still have, I mean, that's why we're doing what we're doing, right? Yeah. Because that element of shut up and dribble um, is still prevalent. Right. It's, it's not as bad. Right. Um, you know, and there's, you know, people like us and others that are uh, fighting against that yeah. or, or giving people a voice. Right. But back then, um, they went they went at him, and like I was just kind of sitting back, and I replayed it, and I just started listening to those buzzwords, yeah, right. And yeah. one that jumped out. There's a lot of them, right? Like if you go yeah, back, that just piss you off. There's one that jumps out. Thug, yeah, hundred percent, one hundred percent. The cultural appropriate nigger word. Right. <laughs> this is how we can say on Disney on all of your broadcasts, we can say the n word. Yeah. We'll call you a nigger. Because we say thug, so it's a code word. Yeah. And they repeated it. Multiple sources. Multiple channels. <laughs> multiple, multiple channels. <laughs> multiple anchors. Yeah, it, it was really um kind of jarring a little bit. Um, you know, because you know, society now is a little they try to be a little more PC in some ways. Um, but that was just, you know, to to really full out like yeah, to you know, kind of thinking at it as a as a 35 year old man now to really call somebody out of their name, really not knowing the person at all. And I don't know if these media people had any idea, but still to really call them out of their name. It's just it's just way disrespectful, super disrespectful. And the problem with it is, you know, it wasn't just the sports media. It yeah. was, you know, random like the culprits, but like, you know, you're Fox, CNN, like right. your, your big, your national news channels right. that just like, hey, pick this up and these thugs and these yeah. zillion dollar athletes that are yeah. just like. And, 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 and you just you hit on a perfect point on that because. It's not like uh, they identified. Rod Artest or or Steven Jackson to call them a, a, a thug, but they just blanket the entire NBA <laughs> because the NBA is. The Negro, nope. yeah. Negro Basketball League. Correct. <laughs> and we the Urban League. The Urban League. <laughs> <laughs> but to blanket that and just say that league is full of thugs, and it's just like, what are you really trying to say? Right. You, <laughs> exactly. You missed the Bob Cousy days. <laughs> I, I guess is what you're really trying to say. Uh, so, yeah, that, that was crazy. And, you know, they talked about that. And I just think us as a culture just used to take it like like you said, which is a great reflection is, you know, when we were younger, we didn't see it as that. Like we right. felt it like, yeah, yo, like that don't that's, sound that's like aggressive. That's aggressive. Like, I don't like the way you coming at me is probably where we felt because we were right. young and still had that, like, right. say it with your chest mentality. Mm -hmm. But um, but definitely not looking back on it, knowing what those coded words were. It's just it's just sickening, you know? Yeah. And then and even another point of how I guess media has progressed nowadays is you know through social media through you know players and uh, athletes kind of taking upon themselves and you know kind of having their own platforms where they can kind of get their voice and their side of the story or whatever the case may be out right. there uh one thing that i noticed in the netflix show is a, a couple of them jermaine o'neill ron artest stephen jackson they even said like they didn't have any chance to say anything defend themselves it was just like this is what happened <laughs> and take your suspension and we don't want to see you again right and so, legally they couldn't even speak about it correct so it was not even to where they had arbitration or just like one-on-one -on -one or just like a written it was just like no nah, shut shut up and dribble yeah and you're gonna take this fine you know, whatever we go so let's jump into that then and yeah. we'll, we can still loop in the media because there was some other stuff the code words another one that came out to me and i think it's a recent since what we went through in 2020 is they called it a riot yeah yeah. And like now I'm really sensitive to that word riot because it's like, you know, it is that in a in a sense. Yeah. But it's just the terminology of how you use it in the sense you use it. Correct. When, it, when it's it's um in the culture of people that were um around in that. So um the next I, thing I, I want to the Stephen uh Stephen uh Stephen A. Smith's hairline back then. Oh, gosh. His old I saw clips. it when he was with the Philadelphia, he's a Philadelphia beat writer, right? Well shot <laughs> He still had it lined up a little bit, right? Oh, boy, remember them dances. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
from the media to the actual league, right? So, um, RIP, of course, to 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 the old commissioner. Yeah. Um, but he was definitely stern. <laughs> to, yeah, to, fit to, his name. To fit his name, right? Yeah. How did you feel about some of the things he did after? Because there were some definite notable things he did, not only in the punishment he delved, but mm-hmm. as well as um, some of the things he changed around the league. Dress code. Dress code. All right? those type of things. Yeah. Um, shout out to David Stern because I, I I think he took the NBA when there was a certain place with the help of, you know, Michael Jordan and, mm-hmm. you know, Magic and Larry and, and elevated to what the NBA is now as a kind of a global game. Absolutely. Or it's definitely international. Um, and I think that was kind of his goal and dream. And, um, and, and he helped get it that, you know, there along with the players and all that. All right. Uh, but it was, it is, he, he did, it seemed like he operated a little different than what I guess outside looking in the NBA operates now as far as um, owner, player, commissioner. Uh, he was. As a team. As a team. Mm-hmm. Collaborative. Coll- yes. Partner. However they want to. We are using some big words tonight, but let's go. However us. they want to. <laughs> <laughs> however you want to call their relationship. Right. It, it seemed much more that he was like, okay, I'm the commission. Not necessarily a partnership. This is my league and. You know, I'm gonna work with the owners, and I'm gonna keep the, I guess, the PR of the league. He hit him with the what was that Players Club Blue? All you do is spin records. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Spin records. That's it. (laughs) Don't say nothing (laughs) to nobody. Recipes, Bernie Mac. But that's that's what it was. Like he handed down. This is my ship. Yep. You riding in my boat. Right. Don't like it. Tough. Because even on the press conference, they were like, you know, uh, how was the vote? And he's like. Oh yeah, uh, it was unanimous. Yeah, vote of one. <laughs> vote of one. <laughs> Let it be known. But you know, on that, it was a, a, a interesting time in the league. I guess. Okay. It's almost like, uh, you know, you say BC and AD uh, before <laughs> Christ, after Christ. Right. This was like, you know, after Jordan. You know, it was it during was the Kobe era, but it was still like when the you know the Lakers were dominant. It was kind of that. San Antonio Spurs, Detroit, Detroit Pistons, Pistons, the end of the Lakers era before LeBron, right? So that figurehead of the league, yeah, I said LeBron, but yeah, he's a figurehead of the league. He is like the the spokesperson, right? So he claims and oh, there you, go. you probably, didn't have to put that on there. Was probably reality too. Yes, there wasn't that face of the league at that point. Facts, they were searching for that. Correct. And so I don't know if Iverson was the league's face that they won. What's the face that they wanted at that time? Either. They wanted none with Bubba Chuck. <laughs> Nothing with Bubba Chuck at all. Well, I, <laughs> Practice. I think, I think that has something to do to with it too, because you can go into how I guess Michael Jordan or however things were in Michael Jordan's air, and you know, there's rumors that you know the league actually suspended him for gambling. He mm-hmm. didn't really retire. They was just like go away or whatever the case is. But in any case, they saved face with Michael Jordan at the point because he was the face of the league. Correct. And there wasn't really a safe face point of the league. At that point, so it was just like David Stern. I'm, I'm, I'm going to handle this the way I need to handle this, or the way you felt like you need to handle it. So you know, my favorite topic is follow the money. Okay. So I know it is. He definitely was looking for the bag. Like he said, "Look, if we don't handle this a certain way, like we could lose all this, like all this momentum, right?" Because everybody wanted to be like Mike, but who are you going to be like once Mike leaves, right? Ron Artest. <laughs> <laughs> He's wearing twenty three. Hey, there's some people that want to be like Ron Artest. <laughs> Most people will now. I'm not gonna say still like Ryan says, but anyway, um, he definitely had to look at like the financial things, and of course, now we have all these media outlets and conglomerates saying like, you know, you got a league of thugs and dress yeah. code. So he was definitely protecting a bigger vision. Yeah. So at the time, I think you brought up a great point: is it was tough. He made tough moves that really probably are unfair. Mm-hmm. Um, to give the he delved out what um almost 30 plus days to most of them and ron artest <laughs> ron artest was like yo you're done yeah steven jackson 30 games 30. Ron <laughs> remained of the season so it was the regular 73 regular season games 13 playoffs so a total of 86 <laughs> jermaine o'neill 15 games ben wallace six just boom salary loss ron artest lost five million dollars steven jackson probably why he's still working now lost uh you know one million seven hundred thousand dollars jermaine o'neill nearly five million dollars uh, ben Wallace, 400000 So these are not like chump change salaries that are lost. And it's not even like 
it's that you lost them, yeah. <laughs> right? It's not like I had them, you yeah. know, and I've been managing or you took a pe- like that was like yeah. how, I, how I fed my, my family. Yeah. And this is prior to the 20 million dollar a year. Yes. Salaries that are in the NBA now. Correct. All right. So it was a hell of a blow that these guys took, man. And then so once again, we'll rehash about the part where they didn't they couldn't rebut it they couldn't have a sit down with the commissioner you know like you talked about in that collaborative spirit right (laughs) he's an army of one (laughs) yeah and even the actual nba game itself i think kind of changed from that era so i mean one of the things that i kind of look at (laughs) watching this or looking at the documentary was if you saw the score in like the beginning of the fourth quarter they, they just glanced at the score it was like 60 something to 50 something it okay. was literally the beginning of the fourth quarter okay and then at the point of the you know the fight it was 97 82 mm. you rarely see games that are under the hundreds now mark. because nobody wants to sell a bunch of defensive tough ben wallace shout out to your air but nobody wants to see ben wallace just muscle everybody though so the game is even <laughs> different how they play now you see points there's a lot less physical contact there's mm-hmm. not many teams like the pacers or the pistons in this air because it's just a different game right Speaking of different game, then so <laughs> you remember that meme, and I think we sent we you may have retweeted on on our uh, social, but when it talks what's about like what's the meme the uh or the the whatever the post was talking about files back in the day versus files and technicals <laughs> now yeah and we need to find that repost that but like this shit just had me rolling like and that goes to how the league was back yeah. in the day to where. You know, Ron Artest was like hitting people with, you know, arm shivers. Right. Like he was a linebacker trying to take on a pulling guard. Right. Um, and it was just a technical foul to where now, like, you're out of the game with a couple of game suspension. Yeah. And yeah. then, you know, just the mentality of what they call them. Like even Steven Jackson, like, no, we we dogs, you know. You're right. I don't think that these guys have the dog mentality in them now. It's a different game. It's a different game. Um, and just different mentality, like yeah. hell, Trey got spit on, yeah, <laughs> at a game, yeah, like so. And, and I mean, and, <laughs> that's different, and and because that that could have went that could have went left a, a, a whole different, a ways, whole way, different way. Our yeah, spitting is is one of the most disrespectful things. <laughs> we talking about mushing in the like yeah. it goes like <laughs> mush <laughs> spit in the face, like, yeah, that. So that could have went that could have turned left as well pretty quickly. Uh but different game. You're right. Definitely. A different game. So but different players playing the game too. Yeah, that was, that was that point. <laughs> I, I don't know who who Ron Artest would necessarily be <laughs> in the NBA right now if there's a comparison to him. Because Ron Artest was <laughs> he was I remember him just being like really good, but he was always kind of like, dang, this dude's weird. <laughs> he never had a haircut. Like he, like a standard hair, like he didn't have a hairstyle, he just had hair. He, didn't he, was, have a, a, he was a rapper. He didn't have a line. Yeah, he was a rapper. He, he didn't a rapper. have a, he wanted to drop his album. He didn't have a lineup ever. He had a no weird lineup. kind of game. He was like a scorer. Score. He could he shoot. Like, but he was that still that hustler, physical, kind of like physical, like, like getting the getting the yeah, absolutely. Like you he's like a weird player. So you don't even have those guys in the NBA anymore. Like even his style of game. Cause it went from like, you know, I think they gave him a Rodman comparison. And I think that was from his hustle mentality, right? Right. Like grab boards, but right. he's a more of a scorer than Rodman was. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> he was like after 27 points. Easy. Yeah. <laughs> easy, right? Yeah. Um, uh, but then it was because I think more of the comparison is your boy just like left and like, y'all gonna go ahead and drop these awards at the source awards. Like <laughs> I need some time off at the beginning of the season. Yeah. Cause um, you know, I'm in low hit- management. <laughs> low management. Yeah. <laughs> Um, what was I gonna go? One thing I did want to talk about to when we were we were um talking about media and, and characteristics of what's happening is when it became the hip hop league, and it's so weird that it's coming back to becoming a hip hop league, um, not the league in general, but the world. Yeah. Um, I think we talked about it when we had. Uh, Mr. Watkins on and we were talking about clothing and how we influence culture mm-hmm. from the clothing music to sports and everything else like that and they were fighting that culture and I think it was just it was too early for them to have it and understand it and nurture it right because it was such a um, a raw thing you know what I mean yeah I, <laughs> and I and I guess the audience is 
um, how am I, how do I want to say this? Like everybody embraces culture in a in a different way, right? <laughs> okay. I, I guess the younger generation. I, I put it that way, and I, I guess back then I don't I don't know if that was necessarily the case at as as big as it is now, right? I mean, Mo Obama, you can argue is the same as uh, the song Mo Obama. You can, that's the same thing as uh, give me uh, give me give me uh, Rolling Stones or something like that. To me, they're in the same category, right? Mo Bamba. The song Mo Bamba is a Rolling Stone. It's in the same, in whatever the same those. Thing. Same. Same. It's the same thing. Like you telling me, like right the now, you, you telling me right now, like we was listening to Jock Jams, that would be like one of the hottest things, Mo Bamba on Jock Jams Number right two. now. Number two <laughs> on Jock Jams. No, 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 no. <laughs> Number two on the playlist. On the playlist of Jock Jam. I don't know how to, to, to properly say this, but right. yes, Mo Bamba is over there, right? And I guess you could say is. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, song, yeah, right? yeah, thank you. Right? That, I don't you know, know what, what you're You know what I'm to. talking about, but that. Dun, dun, that Sweet Caroline. That, all of that, too. All that is Mo Bamba at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> now it is. Yeah, now it is. <laughs> so I guess there's different people that have embraced the hip hop culture, I guess you could say. I guess you could say that. I guess. I don't know. <laughs> That's my theory. So we talked about the money. We talked about, you know, who was missing. Is there any any kind of things that you want to point out that we didn't touch as far as like this documentary? I know one thing that I, I do know is that they were so all adamant, not even in the documentary. Like I think um, you know, O'Neill was on um Colin Cowherd talking about yeah. the they're all sick of talking about this mm -hmm. and I'm sure they are and it affected them you know not only we talked about the money part yeah but just, just their image and their image you know their actually NBA careers yeah and then actual their personal friendship like you know usually when you play on the team like that's a brotherhood like all right you know there's locker there's people in high school that we still like yo remember that game we, we went to battle blah blah blah, blah. so all right there's those scars that they had. Yeah. And they kind of touched up on them a little bit. I think Ron a lot more than others. All right. But they did touch on that. It's a good point. Uh, and again, I guess I go back to the era of where the NBA was at that time. Okay. I think everybody now is kind of like their own, not everybody, but a lot of stars are kind of their own brand now. Right. Yeah. So they're on their own CEO. So. I don't know if it's, I, I shouldn't say, I don't know what their relationships are with their teammates in the locker locker room, and I don't know how that differs from what it was in 2004. But as good as Jermaine O'Neal was, or as good as the documentary says Jermaine O'Neal was at that time, he wasn't like Zion Williamson when it comes to, like, his own brand. Okay. He wasn't, you know, Stephen Jackson wasn't Kawhi Leonard, I guess, for, you know. He was a missing piece, though, man. He, I, hey. He's the same level player, Kawhi Leonard, <laughs> according to <laughs> Stephen Jackson. And missing his piece. Let's go. All right. But he he wasn't necessarily his own own brand. Yeah, I guess. And even Ben Wallace, I guess you could say if there was a brand, if anybody had a brand within that, you know, the the altercation or just between those two teams, it probably would have been Ben Wallace. But 100%. it wasn't. It wasn't as I guess as mainstream as some of the brands are now. Now, but right. I think the exposure is different now, right? That's true. Um, but but I think having a championship helps that right and you're a part of a That's championship true. team that gets to see that so but even not having a championship like you know i would argue ben simmons has a brand whether it's good or bad or damaged goods or not you know he he has a certain kind of like brand to him like he's his own kind of ceo i, I can't go with you on that. i know you well, i'm still shocked that you like like we should just have a show of why you like ben simmons i love ben simmons you man. love ben simmons which is you know, maybe we'll be all right. I don't know how much of a call... competitor he is, but <laughs> as a, just a talent, I think he's really good. But yes, he has a brand. But like, you know, like you said, for good or bad, but like what's his brand is definitely not basketball anymore. Like it's trash for being basketball. You it's... dated you dated a Kardashian. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And he's you still like you, you pass the ball underneath your rim when you're like 6'10 or 6'8 or whatever the hell he is. And <laughs> you need my, to do a layup. I guess. I guess my point is, is there he's still Ben Simmons, right? Like he's that still, does no. That's no. I'm not buying that shit. Why are you not buying it? He's still like that's just like saying you're still EJ. Like yeah, I'm, like, I'm still EJ, no, but I'm not, not as a about brand. I, I'm not talking as about a brand. He he's his own. Whatever his brand is, is is him. Yeah, Lamelo Ball has a brand. I, I mean, that's I, different. I, that's I, a brand. Okay, let me let me give a different example. Yeah, let's marinate. Point, on that. Let me let me marinate. Point being is there was no 
like I guess it was just a different time where there wasn't a lot of brands right at that point. Yes. Like, for instance, Chauncey Billows was uh, the finals MVP the year before. Mm -hmm. I would argue Chauncey Billows didn't have like if you take any final MVP now and nowadays, they gonna have their own brand. You don't have a deal or something. That You're going to be on somebody's all state commercial, something. somebody's shoe, somebody's oodles or noodles. I don't give a damn. You're going to be on something. No, I, I'm with you. And on I that. don't think Chauncey Billows is on brand at that point. So I think and, and I don't think difference. Ben Simmons is getting like he may get like a Sour Patch well, Kids deal or some shit like that. It's like, still a deal. <laughs> it's still a deal. <laughs> it, hey. South Pass Kids, we are looking for sponsors for Black and Sports. <laughs> uh, but I get your point. I get what you're saying. So, but yeah, so it affected all of them. And it, it was definitely, you see the growth, right? Like we always talk about our younger self versus ourself now. Yeah. And, you know, Ron has grown a lot, right? Like he talked about, like, you know, he was a coward and he admitted it. Like not only I didn't remember him saying that in the interview after he won the championship with the Lakers. I remember him thanking his therapist. I definitely remember that shit. I do too. But I don't remember him saying like, yo, like I was a coward and I feel bad for those guys I left on that championship because I messed that up, which again brings us back to if they were going to win two championships or not because they yeah. claimed that. But it was dope that he kind of, he, he he said that and he, he kind of gave, I don't know, just, a shout out or, or or just thoughts of that because that's that's the worst right yeah like um when they talk about the buffalo bills thing and uh who's the dude that won um uh was it bb that won a, a super bowl mm -hmm. uh with the packers with the packers afterwards he's like y'all feel bad for them because like we fought for it so it was dope to see him do that and i think him and uh, jermaine o'neill are now closer because they did have that kind of like yeah i would too felt some type of way ish going on yeah and and I, I I guess um, God, no, I lost my train of thought on this. <laughs> but um, hearing him talk about uh, <laughs> how he uh, how he was, uh, God damn it, I lost my train of thought. <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. <laughs> so, and I'm the one over here. anyway. So they all had a lot to lose. It, it's good that they've grown up and and um, kind of got over that. And and it was such a, something big in their life. And you just think about what we don't think about, right? So you look at them as professionals, but they're professionals in their 20s, like dealing with something that's really life-changing that could cost them so much and, you know, to overcome of it. So it's almost like where they're at now. <laughs> so yeah, we talked about briefly uh, about like where some of them are now. And you know, we didn't do too much work on this, but um, Ben Wallace, you know, is a is a barber still maybe still cuts hair still cuts hair maybe has maybe owns it we'll we'll give him credit maybe he owns a couple shops a soon to be hall of famer i guess at this point hey that part yeah so you know he's got some legs with that stephen jackson you know he's definitely in our lane Plus, and uh, pump the brakes uh -oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> if i go to my jalen rose thing but yeah stephen jackson to me uh if we go back to brands he's yes. he's literally built his brand off what happened in, in, to me in in this thing this is probably the best thing that happened to <laughs> and i'm dead ass serious <laughs> you said he built his brand off of this mm -hmm. i i mean i'm not and he's the one that's so adamant like he was the one out of all of Steve like, jackson is still the toughest dude in america yes according to him yes and he's like i don't want to talk about it. don't ask me about this ish no more okay. so he was really animated about it when when do you as a grown man uh-huh and this is not necessarily Steven Jackson, but okay. just in general. When, okay. When do you just give up the tough role or just the tough life or just being tough? When 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 does that phase off into another phase of life? I mean, it happens for us all different at different, different times. times. I, I agree. Right? I, mean, I agree. Anyway, uh, not until your 50s, but I mean, <laughs> you can't be. I mean, but, you know, I mean, some people just value respect at a higher level than others. I mean, even Frank Lucas <laughs> phased out at some point. <laughs> I mean, come on. But <laughs> okay. <laughs> Steven but Jackson, even, I think Steven Jackson's he he's stayed on brand for a while on this, but, to be honest with you. And I mean, we can see it with him. I mean, him, not him, well, shout Matt, out to what he's doing Matt now. Barnes more than him, because when they were messing with old boy, what they who was they uh I don't want to say bullying. But they were fucking. Oh, they weren't bullying him because uh, he was bodying hey, him. He was really hot when and he got back on. But they, but they started with him. I'll yeah, say Kwame they. Brown's Kwame body Brown's body. Brown. Both of them. <laughs> <laughs> Becky. <was there. laughs> but hey, he had so to 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 kind of go. Yeah, you know what? Two weeks. 
No. So for you, what you said is definitely on point, right? That's been his brand because his podcast is called All the Smoke. So he's sticky with that. That's I mean, just I, his he, brand. So, so brand. now that he that's his brand, I don't think he ever leaves that now. So to answer your question, um, I don't know when it's that's make, it's, it's making him money, right? It's making him money. So that's you know, like so Stephen A lost his hairline, so now he just gotta be crazy on TV. So everybody <laughs> everybody's got a hook. But yeah, so he's all in smoke, and he's also a coach of um the big three. So I think he's coaching the little ice cube league. He was this uh here the other way. All right, moving on. Ron Artest. <laughs> Uh, yeah. he's a family man. Yeah. He has somebody that uh, wants to be a coach too. Yes. And wants to be a coach. Yeah. Which I'm confused. Like it wasn't specific. Like, does he want to be a, cause doesn't his daughters he, play basketball, volleyball? He want to be like a volleyball, like a little nah, volleyball he, coach. It seems like he wants, he thinks, he thinks and really believes he should be an NBA coach at this point. So what is he doing to get towards that? That's what we got to, he's taking a lot of interviews. Oh, is he? I mean, on TV. I'm not saying. <laughs> I don't know if he's actually interviewing for a job. Those type of interviews. <laughs> he's interviewing. Something's getting interviewed. So anyway, <laughs> shout out to the interviews. And then, of course, um, you know, O'Neal, um, he is like flipped it, I think, the most. Yeah. Um, out of everyone. But then again, you could argue that he lost the most as far as where his career could have went, you know, what he was accomplishing and I mean, he took one of the biggest financial hits. Sure. Um, but yeah, I mean, he's loud, like a business mogul, like for sure. Mm -hmm. uh, I think we were recapping some of the things he has, and I don't know if you got some of that stuff pulled up, but like he, he owns with like thirty-two chicken. What is it? Um, uh, was it tur churches? Churches. He owns. Hey man, let's let's <laughs> let's touch on that grease. But them biscuits is fire. Them biscuits is fire, man. But that's definitely heart attack boy, grill, like a <laughs> and boy. I don't know where y'all get all these damn chicken thighs from at churches chicken. <laughs> But I'm tired. Of <laughs> can I, don't I get, like a, can I get a can I get a two thigh piece God, meal? <laughs> get these chicken ACLs out of here. Where the rest of the breast at? But no, he's but he's killing them. I mean, he's a developer. Yeah. Um, and then we even posted, and this was a while ago, and until we re, until we looked it up, I had forgot about it. But he started his own sports agency. Yeah. Um, with someone else. So, so um, I mean, a good turnaround. So good for them. A lot of growth. Um, we didn't really touch on it, but, you know, kudos to uh, Ron for, you know, he was handling some mental health stuff way back then. Yeah. Um, and he gracefully, <laughs> as gracefully as you could say the malice of the palace was, got through it. Um, yeah. But it's just crazy. It's just the timeline of what we see now. Right. And to yeah. understand what people were dealing with, because I didn't know he had a therapist that track is like, yeah, he had a guy like or the lady that whole time before. Yeah. So he recognized that he had issues, um, but it's just kind of how the team deals with it and how they move on. Yeah, and even um, kind of with that, he uh, <laughs> he's open. He was open with it. Open now, right? Are they, they're open with it now? But even back then, I don't know. They didn't how, talk about it. It wasn't as 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 talked about. It was he's different. <laughs> so that's different. And then Ben Wallace at the time, which we didn't know, and shout out to Netflix for oh. Yeah, I mean, at the time, you didn't know he was going through a loss. Yeah, a loss. So, again, we go back to how, you know, it's people's state of mind. Like, yeah, what, people deal with things differently. And then, like, what call, and that's the whole thing, right? There's always a story behind, right? You know, so when we are quick to judge or, or when those certain things happen, it's like we can definitely have an opinion. There's nothing, I don't think there's wrong with having an initial opinion. Sure. Based on the facts that you're presenting at the time. Mm -hmm. I just think it's when you get more facts and more things, you need to be open to adjusting those opinions. And I think that's one of the things that the NBA failed at once. Like they found out that this Jay Green was the initial person that started it. And, sure. And that there were, let's talk about that. There were no cops on the floor. Like I think they were all taking donut break. Well, first, first of all, that they only had three cops. Yeah. Right. And then all of them decided to take donut breaks <laughs> yeah. at the end of the line. Oh, this is a blowout, man. Let's, yeah. let's try to beat this traffic. Right. <laughs> Even crazy about that, I remember we this just past playoffs and uh, you know, Katie's uh, bodyguard hemmed up PJ Tucker, <laughs> yes. and we quickly identified. But how quick they was on the court and any kind of altercation, now it, it definitely was <laughs> not as uh, prevalent back so, then. So we take it all as lessons learned, correct? Because I'm surprised, like the the state, like they had the stadium operations person, which like I really didn't need to hear from you either. But. Yeah. You should have been fired, like, yeah, because your protocols and how things worked. And 
I mean, we can get into the police about how they were going to mace, you know, the two brothers. Uh, like, yeah, um, but Reggie Miller was like, like, hold on, cuz. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm Reggie Miller. <laughs> you know, straight L.A. And then my homeboy said, I didn't know it was Reggie Miller. Yeah, like, okay. Yeah. You need yeah. come like if he's a football player, we 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 understand the helmet. Sure. We've both been through the helmet syndrome, but right. Reggie Miller, you didn't know that's who that was. Beat it. Yeah. All right, man. So 2017, the palace was demolished and was the end of an era. Um, and um, hopefully this show is the end of an era that these guys have to deal with and was able to say their piece and puts perspective on it. Um, I think they took some of the stuff like a G. Um, and I, they've all attempted or, or have recovered from, you know, what went on. Any final thoughts from you, MH? Two things. One, or actually three things. Mr. Green that threw the, the beer. Mm -hmm. I know he's probably top five in the country in a uh, cornhole because the accuracy, <laughs> when they kept showing it slow, I mean, the accuracy in which he did it, <laughs> unbelievable. So, I know he's a he, cornhole he, champ. Yeah. See him on ESPN Ocho. <laughs> he's a five-star corn, <laughs> cornhole. Number two, we didn't mention Fred Jones. He's also missing. So Fred Jones played for the Pacers at that time. If you have chance, go back and watch <laughs> YouTube footage. It's not in 4K, so you're going to have to really look. But there's a part at the end, probably about the 10-minute mark, where they kind of reshow what is going on. Right. There was one player that was in the stands <laughs> that did not get suspended. We did not read his name off or fine because there was, there was somebody from Detroit putting some work, <laughs> putting some combinations on the back of his head. <laughs> he was hitting them with the ludicrous throwing them bows. He was dropping them on him. So we got a chance to go look at that. Look at that. And then I got a question for you, EJ. And this is the third one? This is my third one. Okay, here. question for me. Hit it. It's my last. If this were to happen today, mm-hmm. How do you think the media will react? How do you think the players would have react? Just what have been, what would have been the noise or the circumstances built around if this happened today, August 18th, 2021? The same thing. So the same situation. It's not happening. I mean, we touched on it briefly because these players today aren't dogs, as Steven Jackson would have, okay. would have mentioned. I mean... You had some similar. Oh, Westbrook gets mad every, every week at somebody in the crowd, but it's yeah, different. Yeah, it's different, man. Got you. It's like, I think that one thing that I hate and like, or I, I don't want to say hate, I, I accept, okay, is that they're like fake thugs. I don't want to call them fake thugs, but I just, ah. but just like they're, they're mad to a, to a point because they're always mindful of the bag. Correct. You should be. I don't think you should be because if somebody spits, you need to be if somebody right spits now. on you, man. Yeah, I like, know that that that's that's pushing it. I hope the the big baby Jesus and <laughs> everything else that I can restrain myself because, like you know, I have a lot to lose now in life and all that stuff. So yeah. that's where they're at in life. They have a lot to lose, and they're understanding that they are a brand. Okay. So I think that's why today that that wouldn't happen because I'm gonna get a set enough to i can go back to the hood and people ain't gonna clown me like oh man you let him do that and you didn't do anything mm -hmm. so i think nothing would happen media wise what do you think media. And how does how does social media take it now you know how everything just memed up and i will get my seven laughs like kevin uh not kevin hart but uh what's your other short dude did you like uh, cat williams I'll get i like my, cat williams i'll get my seven laughs in because social media would tear everything up yeah, so fred jones social media be funny okay Media you will have depending on because now media is a certain categories that what, what channel you yeah. Fox yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Fox News okay we know that okay. would, would would you know bring that rhetoric yeah we'll they would, call they, it they would have threw out the, the word yes the word okay. um you know riots and and thugs would be kind of categorized from them but I definitely don't think anything would happen these days and you know what you know we want we want to put it out to you and so um was that it man that was it those are great final thoughts man i, I like what you recap put the put the bow on this man so let us know who you thought started it or who is at fault for this malice in the palace we'd like to get your comments and, and, and thoughts on that and then also <laughs> if you think could malice in the palace happen today and then how would media react man so thank you guys always for joining us today in the locker room i hope you enjoy listening 
Um, always follow us, give us ideas and thoughts on what you would like to hear on the show. And just please stay safe, practice gratitude, and know we're rooting for you. Screaming, all us blacks got a sports and entertainment until we even. Assuming I'm rooting for everybody that's black. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. Assuming I'm rooting for everybody that's black. Yo, 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 yo. Show me I'm rooting for everybody that's black Spat out to racks on handmade new rags Show me I'm rooting for everybody that's black That's everybody from sports to college class to rap and back.